Hey, hello, welcome back to Clep's Garage. I'm your host, Bruce, and today we're going to have a debate. I was talking to the Partington Racing family down under in Australia. Doug, to be in uh, a case in point, the patriarch of the family. Doug, I want to talk to you here too. Tell us a little about this car. Oldest uh, surviving car in Australia, right? Uh, that, that's right, Matt. It was the oldest car built in Australia. It was built as a racing car. I bought it when I was 14 years old, so I've had it 62 years. It uh, still laps uh, the Iowa Speedway at 80 miles an hour. We did that six weeks ago, and we're having a ball in America. And we do have the founders to bring it to the old car festival here in Ireland. And uh, the uh, isn't that funny? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> at the uh, Henry Ford Museum. Thank you very much, everybody. We've had a ball. We'll now start it up because of what. If it was running now, you wouldn't be able to hear anybody. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. A real treat to have this car here. Thank you. Apparently down there, they have two different driver's licenses. You have a license for driving an automatic car, and you have a driver's license for driving a stick shift car. So the debate is, is a Model T an automatic or a stick? I say it's a forerunner of the automatic, and I'm going to say it's an automatic. Reason point number one, there's no sliding gears. There's no gear shift. In fact, there's no gears in the transmission except what the planetary gears run on which is the same as an automatic. Uh, here in a little bit in the video, we're going to show you the internal working of it from one of our other videos. But for right now, just going to explain something here. Uh, this car, basically, I'm the computer. I tell it what to do. I have to start it. I tell it to start. I tell it to move. On a stick shift car, you have to hold the clutch in when the motor's running and physically put it into a gear. On this car, once it's running, we'll just show you. So once it's running, if I want to go forward, I just step on this little pedal, and I go forward. If I want to go reverse, I step on this pedal, and I'm in reverse. Of course, this naturally is the brake, but this is just the way an automatic transmission works. They have fluid pressure that holds these bands in. I'm holding the bands as my foot, so I'm using foot pressure. So I say to you that this is an automatic transmission. Do I want to go? I just go and uh, I don't have to put it in gear I don't have to grind anything there's no grinding gears in the Model T I can go from reverse to forward to reverse forward reverse I don't grind any gears and then in uh, it has two speeds slow and slower so this is slower and then when you put it in here this is higher so this would be the slow slower so let's open this up for a debate of what everybody else thinks because uh, the family down under is wanting to try to prove to the government that driving a Model T is like driving an automatic uh, car. You don't need two different licenses. So uh, we'll show you how the internal guts of this works and then we'll go for a ride. All right, so I'm back here with Dave Nolte and Dave's got an excellent broke down model of the T transmission and he's got it all color coordinated. So he's just going to give us a brief synopsis of how first, reverse, high gear, and brake work. So go ahead and all right. do your thing. The flywheel is attached to the crankshaft, and when the entire assembly is spinning like this, we're in high gear. The red drum shows you what your rear wheels are doing. So if you put the brake on, the rear wheels stop. If you stop the green drum, which is low gear, you notice that it's now traveling small, slower, not this, this. Oh, yeah, this. Traveling slower than the flywheel. 
and then if you hold the blue one as reverse, we get reverse out of it. And the gear change is done, of course, high gear, you're running at drive sh or crankshaft speed. Yeah. The, um, so this is all locked in as one. Because it's all locked in as one unit. In. So none of these gears are turning. None. None of these are stopped. But when you do stop these, the reverse gear has a drum, has a larger gear than the gear on the triple. And that gives you, it reverses your direction. So the blue is, is this inner, inner gear, right? Yep. That's the reverse gear. The green is the low band. Below speed. And then the brake, well, well there is a brake on the red, though. And it's, that's, actually, that's they call this the driven high. gear because it's what's driving. The high gear. Driving everything. Dri it okay. drives your, your brake drum. So it was very simple. This all ran in oil, mm -hmm. motor oil. That actually helped keep it cool. Originally, there was cotton bands around this, which nowadays we use Kevlar because you don't have to adjust them. They're like bulletproof. <laughs> Get that, Kevlar, bulletproof. Anyhow, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a very simple design. It's what put the world on wheels. It's the closest thing to an automatic transmission because you're just holding the bands in. On an automatic transmission, the fluid pressure is holding those bands in. Same difference. So I don't know, anything else you want to add? That's it. It's, drive your Model T. Drive your Model T. It's a it's a simple thing. And if, if you break any of these, this is the guy to see because he makes them all brand new CNC, which they didn't have back in the day. But boy, let me tell you, these are perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Have a good day. I will. All right, so we'll go over a standard shift transmission real quick. So a standard shift transmission, you have a whole bunch of gears inside of a case going roundy round. And some of them are fixed, and some of them are sliding, and some of them do this, and some of them do that, and some of them go like this. See, this one's going that way, and this one's going this way. So it's like that. Isn't that fun? Anyhow, uh, <laughs> we're not going to go into the details. This is a standard three-speed, so you have to physically select a gear. So, uh, and then you have to hold the clutch in. Let's just show you real quick. So, uh, you gotta shove the clutch in. Gotta find them and grind them. Hear those gears? And I gotta let the clutch out to make it move. And then when I wanna stop, I gotta shove the clutch in. If I wanna go forward, I gotta do this again. And then I gotta shift. Once I get rolling, I gotta start off from first, go to second, and then go to third. And when I stop, I gotta put it in neutral and hit the brakes or I could downshift. I would suggest for newbies to come up to a stop sign to put it in neutral and hit the brakes. Easy peasy. So that's the big difference between Model T and a standard shift transmission. So again, the forum is open. Let's hear from you, the viewer, what you think. Is the Model T an automatic or is it a stick? Does it, Model T don't do that. There's no gears to grind. Wasn't that fun? I had fun. Okay. Oh my God, I can't get out. Let me try to get out there. So as like before, we're going to take a drive. We just we just go. They're slowest. They're slow. It's just that easy. Just like on a, on a stop, I just push the brake pedal and put it in neutral, and now I'm stopping. If I want to back up, I just back up. Could be that easy. Yes, it's just that easy.
All right, well, there you go. I hope this opens up a discussion. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let's, uh, let's see the pros and cons here, automatic or stick, what you think. Let's, uh, let's give Doug from down under a, a leg up on uh, having one driver's license instead of two. And uh, I'm interested to see your comments. So, as always, drive them if you got them. Thanks for watching.